Here's a quick attempt to test out scripts. This JS Fiddle has a symbol script. We have a heading one that says, Hey Caitlin, or Catlin. And we have a script here that says, Yo Cat. And when you run it, you get a pop-up that says, Yo Cat. A couple of issues here. One is that um, this is JS Fiddle, and there's a lot of settings, and we're not exactly replicating the way pages link to one another. In order to get this to run, I believe I had to go pick something like no library and there may be some other options but it's a good idea to uh, um, get this to work so that you can start playing around with code this does not necessarily set you up to connect code the way you need to so we're going to go do that in um, VS Code since you probably want to look at my pretty face here I go and I mean that sarcastically I'm trying not to use sarcasm here we go. So I'm going to open uh, Visual Studio Code. Hey Google, open code. No, that's Siri. I'm getting all my things confusing. Hi Echo, Echo, hi. Oh no, it's International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Siri, talk like a pirate. Hey Siri, talk like a pirate. I can't find ye directions to ye next pillage. Schedule ye walks off the gangplank, or remind ye where ye buried ye treasure. Just ask, matey. Hey Siri, open code. I'm going to basically open the work we've already been doing in private HTML. And I'm just going to make a new page. And this is uh, really simple. I'll take the introduction I had before. You should all have that. And I'll do a file save as. Uh, let's see, file save as. And I'm just going to call this script demo dot htm. And in the process of doing that, I'm going to leave everything alone except in my main. I'm going to remove the contents. Whoa. I'm going to remove everything inside main um, except for the title of the page. And the title of the page will be script demo. Everything else should stay the same, except, of course, at the top, we have to put the name of that page there as well. I'm going to save this, and then you might recall my earlier instructions about how we always want to open this locally in a browser. And we do that with Control-O, I believe, uh, open file. And uh, let's see, recent supplication, where did I put mine? And so here's my page and I know it's script demo and I've got the name of the file up there and I've got the name here. All three say script demo. Name of page there, name of page there, or actually the file name, name of page here. So far, so good. So the next step is just to go ahead and make a very simple script. We're going to be as simple as we possibly can here. I'll do Command N to make a new file. And I'm just going to put alert, yo, and save this. When I save it, I need to be sure to save it in my scripts folder. If you don't have that, create it. And you definitely don't want to save it as all of this junk. You want to save this as default.js. So this just means this one's going to load every time, no matter what. And I got to make sure it's in there. Hopefully that's putting it in the right place. And we save it. And we can see it's in default.js and it's in the inside the scripts folder. So now I need to come back to my. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close some of these other pages. I don't need any of that. I'm going to come back to script demo and I want to link to it. 
And I'm getting old and I don't do this all day every day, so I forget things. In fact, you don't nor do this kind of code a lot because this is set up. So I believe I need a hyperlink to this, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, so I think it's like source equals, no, we don't put equal, we'd be do, we'd be do um, link. Eh, let's try link, we'll fix it up if it's wrong, equals. And then we do scripts slash default.js. And I'm gonna, that's a self-closing tag. Now, I don't like it. I don't think this is right. So um, I'm going to go and do a quick search. And link, we'll do w3schools, link a, a, a Java JS file. And it's script, and then the source, and then we close the script tag. So this is one of those oddball ones where we actually, it's not a self-closing tag, and but we have to put the closing tag, which is weird. And instead of the link tag, we use the script tag. I'm assuming that's accurate. Don't ever trust the internet, but you can often trust the internet. Okay, so now I have it linking to my default script. I need to make sure that it's actually um, goes in the head because it doesn't say right here. Note cannot contain the script tag. Yeah, so don't go ahead and put in your code. Do not put the script tag in here. This is all JavaScript. There are three languages we're going to use a lot in this class. HTML, and you speak HTML in that world. CSS, and you speak CSS in that world. And JavaScript, and you speak JavaScript in that world. In this case, these three folders are three different languages, and we only we do overlap them a little bit, but not a lot. So in general, you're not well. You'll never put HTML in your scripts. You will never put HTML in your styles. You will sometimes put scripts and styles in your HTML. Clears mud, right? So where does this go? Uh, HTML script drag. Try it yourself. Let's see if we can find. Yeah. So here we put it right in our code. Doesn't even need to be in the head. A general rule. Is they went in doubt, put it at the very end of the most visible thing on your page, which in this case is going to be at the end of our body. So I'm actually going to go right here. Now I know I said don't ever put stuff, um, don't ever put stuff. Well, actually, you know what? We're going to try this first. But the reason where you put it matters is it has to do with the way the page loads. And sometimes you don't want your script to run until your page is fully loaded. And in this case, it'll load right at the top and then your page loads. And then if it required something on the page to run, it won't work. So a lot of times a good practice is just to put the script right down here between your footer and your body. So it's the last thing in the body. By the way, I have a pet peeve about these empty lines at the end of any file. So I tend to delete them. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So just to confirm what we've got is we have uh, this link script in the scripts folder, and we have in the script a simple alert. And we have to make sure to save both those files. And then I go back to the browser, and I'm just going to look at this file, which I have here, and I'll refresh it. And notice when I refresh it, it just runs the script. This is a simple enough script that I can get away with putting it at the top. However, you don't always want the script to run right away. So what we can do is we can do something like say a function function my function um i don't like my function i don't like my and anything we'll say um greet uh me we'll say greet by name and we put that there and we define our function here we're going to put um let name let name equals prompt What's your name, pirate? And semicolon, and that gives us the name, and then we'll do an alert that says, yeah, ahoy, comma, plus name, plus glad, 
Enter B. What do we? What do, what do pirates do? Sailing with with the likes of ye. Some other nonsense. So we have a string concatenation. So now I have this function greet by name. I'm going to save this. Command S. I'm going to go back and refresh the page, make sure I haven't broken anything. I still get yo, but the other code doesn't run. Why doesn't it run? Because this is in a function. And in order for a function to run, we have to actually call the function. I'm gonna go back and look at W3Schools and look at this code, and notice that in this example, they're simply linking to the scripts file. And uh, when we run it ourselves, it just calls the script. So there is no function call, right? However, if we want to call a function, we can do a very simple, we can do another uh, pretty straightforward example. And I'm going to go and do a similar search. W3Schools.js function link. Oh, I didn't mean link. I meant, uh, I meant to call a function. Um, call JS function. And here you see we've created some code. And uh, let's see, I'm not sure if this, this is actually straight up in the script. This is not calling it from the web page. So we're going to go and find a different example call function from HTML. And dip, dip, dip. We have to decide what do we want to, when do we actually want this function to run? What event should occur? Uh, for this function to go and I'm looking for a nice little HTML example and probably um, we could do the on click event and the on click event means well when do we want that to actually occur so in fact I'm doing this recording hopefully it is recording because a student said something about buttons so I'm going to go ahead and do a button and what we're going to do is take this code now I said don't copy and paste so I should follow my own guidelines so I'm going to remember button on click equals my function um, click button. So we'll go back around and we'll start by doing in our HTML. We're going to go ahead and do this in the main. We'll go ahead and make a pair. Well, no, we'll do button. Button. We'll go and start and end our button. And we're going to put an on click on click equals what? And then I believe I called greet. What was it? The name was greet by name, greet by name. And is there anything else to that button? We'll go back and double check the syntax button on click function name, and then click me. So whatever we want the button to say, Hey there matey. We have a button. When we click the button, it's going to call this function and the button should say on it, hey there matey. And that's about it. So how does this work? Assuming it works, we go and load the script, which has this function in it called greet by name. And when the user clicks the button, now that the function is essentially loaded in memory. And when the user clicks the button, it goes to that function in memory and then runs it. So let's have a shot. We've got to remember to save command S. And here, Command S, well, I think we already saved that. I go back to my browser, and I find the page, and I refresh it. And I get my yo, and now I have my button, hey there, matey. And I click that, it says, what's your name, pirate? And I say, Ichabod. And it says, oh, Ichabod, glad to be sailing with the likes of ye. And here we have an example of where a script runs. There's a little bit more to it, and it will get more complicated as you go through, but uh, that's not actually so bad. Let's just recap within our code. By the way, notice again, I'm testing locally. And the reason we can test locally is that JavaScript typically runs in the client, unless you're doing node or you're doing some kind of re request that requires HTTP. We're not using HTTP here. We're just loading the file in the browser locally. And because all the browsers run JavaScript, it's just running the JavaScript. When we want to do something like an include, which um, 
I will want you to do, that may only be testable on an actual web server, which means your school web pages or your github.io pages. But for these kind of simple things, this works fine. So we'll reiterate what's actually happening here. We have a web page, HTML, that links to a document, which is happens to be JavaScript. That document has in it code which will run as soon as the page is loaded and other code which will load as soon as the page is loaded but not run until the function is called. So these are two scenarios. You generally will avoid this. We use this for testing. And generally you don't want pop-ups even if they are prompting a user. Generally this stuff would be done in the page but it gets a little more complicated. This is a great way to get started and I would suggest you memorize alert as a tag and I suggest you memorize prompt because they're both convenient to have and to play around with all the time. And that hopefully gives you a good start.